This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. The almost unthinkable has occurred, at least unthinkable in the minds of many people. And that is that Donald Trump was elected to become the 45th president of the United States of America. Now, I jotted down some comments, some ideas, some notes as to what it all may mean, what happened in the past, how we got where we are, and what the future may hold. And I'd like to read a few excerpts from my notes that are going to be published pretty soon. And I wrote that what most didn't believe possible has indeed occurred. A Republican candidate, Donald Trump, was elected to become the 45th president of the United States of America. And as the Republicans have also maintained the majority in both the House and the Senate, Mr. Trump will become the most powerful man on earth. His power will be greater than that of any recent American president. The German mass tabloid Bild ran this headline on November 9, Trump Almighty. As US Today wrote, Mr. Trump will be in a position to repeal large parts of President Obama's agenda, repeal the executive orders with a stroke of a pen, and install conservative Supreme Court justices. And of course, as Commander-in-Chief, he can go to war. Almost half of Americans, because Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote, and most countries in the world have reacted with shock, with concern, and with anxiety. The Guardian, a British paper, echoed those sentiments, stating this, and I quote, This is primarily an American catastrophe that America has brought upon itself. Close quote. Europe is also very concerned. Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, former German minister, of energy and economics, economics wrote, and I quote, a gruesome awakening for Europe when it is finally waking up. The BBC wrote that if Mr. Trump keeps his promise, then only four of NATO's 28 members would qualify for support from Washington in the case of a war. German Defense Minister Ursula von der Leyen asked Mr. Trump for clarification on whether the U.S. would remain committed to NATO. German Vice-Chancellor Sigmar Gabriel called Mr. Trump's victory, quote, a warning for Germany and Europe. German Foreign Minister Frank-Walter Steinmeier, who had called Donald Trump a hate preacher, said that foreign relations would become more difficult with President Trump. The French ambassador to the United States tweeted that the world is collapsing before our eyes. And so voices are being heard in Europe that Europe cannot any more rely on America and that therefore Germany needs to become the leader of the world. Now, not everyone reacted with dismay and disapproval. In addition to European right-wing politicians and Brexit proponents, Russia's Vladimir Putin welcomed Mr. Trump's victory, expressing hope for a better understanding and a better relationship between the two countries. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu called Mr. Trump a true friend of the State of Israel. Temple Mount activist Yehuda Glick congratulated Mr. Trump and invited him to ascend the Temple Mount. Israeli Education Minister Naftali Bennett claimed the era of a Palestinian state is over. And Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barakat reminded Mr. Trump of his promise to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Now, even before the results came in, voices had been heard warning of the devastating status of the United States of America after eight years of the Obama presidency. And I was surprised to read the following biting comment by the mass tabloid Bild on November 6, because Bild has been very sympathetic normally towards Mr. Obama and towards Mr. Bill Clinton and towards Mrs. Hillary Clinton. Nevertheless, that's what they wrote. They said that Mr. Obama was mainly responsible 
for the conditions of his country, leaving behind an international and a quote, field covered with ruins. And then they continued that America's foes are no longer afraid of the US presidency, while America's friends have no more confidence in President Obama. The tabloid expressed the hope that the world has learned from eight years of Obama that politicians are dangerous if they present themselves as saviors. I'm afraid the world hasn't learned that though. On November 7, again before the election was concluded, the Berliner Zeitung spoke of America's downfall and yes, they used that word, which we have been using for quite a while. They spoke of America's downfall and voiced the opinion that, and I quote, America is paralyzed politically, if not something worse happens, and dark times await America. Now, those who understand biblical prophecy should be able to see how all of this points at predetermined, predicted end time events, ready to be fulfilled. The Bible shows that the relationship between the United States of America and Europe will deteriorate to the point of war. It's also clearly revealed that Germany, which is modern Assyria, will lead a United States of Europe under a very charismatic leader. And he is called the Beast, he is called the King of the North, and he is also called King Jerob in Scripture. And you read it in the book of Hosea, in the 5th chapter, in the 10th chapter. And it is perhaps remarkable that a few years ago, former German finance minister and candidate for chancellorship in 2013, Pierre Steinbrück, began a public speech by saying, I am not King Jerob. So what did he understand about King Jerob? Very remarkable comments. Dark days are indeed ahead for the United States and the rest of the world. Those who voted in these presidential elections for the lesser of two evils will be greatly sobered in the not distant future when they realize that God placed Mr. Trump in the position of American president not to make this country great again, but to bring about necessary events leading to the most terrible time in all of mankind's history called the Great Tribulation. And you can read about that one in Matthew chapter 24. I concluded my notes with saying, may God be with all of you and help you to become worthy to escape all these devastating and chaotic things which will surely and shortly come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man when he returns. And you might want to read Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1 and Luke chapter 21 and verse 36. In order to help you to better understand what we are experiencing right now and what is in store for the future, please write for our free booklets Europe in Prophecy and the Fall and Rise of Britain and America. Thank you very much for listening. This is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God. P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.